It's time for That's BS. That's some bull Bullshit. Bullshit. He's a liar. He's lying to us, man. I don't believe you. That's BS. I'm sorry. I'm allergic to bullshit. Welcome back to the Sports Blast 1460 WXBR. Remember, you can call us at 508-588-9927. That's 508-588-WXBR. It's time for That's BS, where we basically call out all coaches, athletes, public figures on anything and everything they say that we think is absolutely BS, starting with some comments LeBron had about Paul Pierce and KG owing Ray Allen an apology last week. Now, Mark, I believe you have some insider info on this. Yes, the the quote was from New York Daily News. All right, so the first thing that I thought was like, wow, Ray got called, uh, got killed for leaving Boston, and now these guys are leaving Boston. I think it's okay. I don't mind it. But there was a couple of days, a couple of guys that basically criticized Ray for leaving, and everybody else is leaving. That's the nature of the business, man. I don't know what Boston was going through at the end of the day. I know Ray had to make the best decision for him, his family, and his career. Doc, KG, Paul, and Paul did that as well. Now, my thing is, looking back at the trade between the Nets and Celtics, how was that trade completed? Danny Ainge, well, he didn't ask. He just told KG and Paul that that was what was going to happen. And he sent off Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Jason Terry to the Brooklyn Nets for all these guys, these new guys, Gerald Wallace, Chris Humphreys, you know, uh, Marshawn Brooks was also a part yep. of that deal, and a bunch of first-round picks. So what's what's surprising about that? Problem. KG had a no-trade clause, boys. He waived it, so? He waived his no-trade clause. So when LeBron was a free agent and he left Cleveland to Miami to win a championship... What did everybody do? He bashed on him. Mm -hmm. What about Ray Allen? When Boston threw more money and more years towards his way, what did he do? He went to Miami for less money and wanted to win a championship. What did KG and Paul Pierce do? They left Boston and went to the Brooklyn Nets to win. Well, I mean, it's not both of them, you'll understand, did not want to have to do this. Now, given, granted... They did not want to K- be a part KG, of the rebuilding. KG had a no-trade clause. He could have said, no, I'm saying. No, no, but the thing is, what you're missing is that it took him a while, and he finally accepted it. Trust me, KG did not want to leave Boston. He did, however, not also want to be a part of a rebuilding process. Ray Allen was not leaving a rebuilding process. He was leaving a core that was intact. He just took off. With these guys, they have, what, one year left, maybe, or two years, and then, and then that's it. So with them, with Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce, they said, all right, if you're going to trade me to start from scratch, Danny Ainge, at least trade me to a contender. And I have no problem with that. I have a problem with LeBron's comments because they were totally unwarranted and uncalled for. What happens in that locker room when a former player comes back is between those guys. Why are you butting into it? It's just backing up LeBron himself. You know, he's tired of being criticized for the decision that he made in which he actually raised charity money for. But... I think that Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett are kind of hypocritical, if you ask me. They, they really are hypocritical because, you know, they threw Ray under the bus for leaving Boston. And then what do they do? They leave Boston. That's my point. KG had a no-trade clause. If he wanted to stay in Boston and change Danny Ainge's mind, he would have said, No, Danny, I'm staying here. I'm staying in Boston. You can take your plans and put them elsewhere because I'm not going through with that. And we're, we're, gonna, we're actually going to hold down for another one, one or two more years. But the thing is, we could spin that another way, and we could say there was absolutely no way that would have worked. We wanted, as much as I love Kevin Garnett as a player, I didn't want him here anymore. I liked this deal. I loved this deal. When I saw that we were sending away some of these old veteran players that gave us a lot of years here in Boston and got back a ton of first-round picks, I loved the deal, to be honest with you. I got a question for both of you guys. Just, just the feeling of uh, of the team, basically, when both of these trades happened. When Ray Allen left, it sort of still felt like the Celtics had a shot at at making a run, at least for another year. And and maybe maybe that was why it it came off a lot more sore when Ray Allen left. Right now, I mean, when KG and Paul Pierce left. Did did anyone really feel like the Celtics had a had a good shot at, at but winning didn't, a championship? Not at all. Not at My all. thing is when KG signed that two year contract in uh, 2011, I believe 2010, the extension. Mm. Didn't he, didn't uh, he re- no, no, he Kevin resigned. Garnett. Didn't he resign with the Celtics? 
Kevin Garnett. Yeah, no, I, you're thinking of Paul Pierce, right? Paul Pierce signed a four-year extension, I believe, at the end of 2009. Well, they, they must have extended uh, KG's contract because in the contract, there was a no-trade clause. And my Didn't thing he have is, that left over from Minnesota? No. Or was that I, I'm from, pretty like, sure okay. that was part of All the right. deal that Danny Ainge signed okay. K- Kevin Garnett with. Okay. And that's my point. I think Danny Ainge saw that coming, and he said, you know what? I'm going to actually put the ha- the deal in the hands of Kevin Garnett. So one, I don't get backlash for putting Kevin Garnett in a trade. But two, so that he can decide what he really wants. Does he want to stay with the Boston Celtics, or does he want to go to the Brooklyn Nets? and Or to the LA Clippers, or a team where he feels like he can win another NBA ch- championship. Okay, so you're going to say not BS on that. Not BS. I'm not going with wow. BS on that. That is a valid statement and has weight. So you're Total saying weight Le- behind LeBron, it. LeBron's statement, you're saying. Is Here's the it? reason why I think it's BS. It, it's just uh, sort of mind your business, stick with your own team. Yeah. And, uh, and I understand that Ray Allen, uh, you know, teammates, but... What, KG why, said why the you, exact quote you just said. Why are you going to Why are you going to say anything about a team that you have never had any affiliation with, right. other than the fact that you know you you may have been up against them in a championship for mm-hmm. a year or two if you if you'd gotten there against exactly. Them. Do you think he's getting under the skin of the Brooklyn Net, uh, KG and Paul? Pierce I don't think this was a getting under the skin tactic at all. I think you know. I mean, like, well, why Brooklyn Nets are on on the top of the ladder with Miami Heat? Yeah, but I mean, if you ask me, you could even look at that as bulletin board material. So I think he was just answering a question that may or may not have been blown out of proportion, and now we're just looking at and analyzing and overanalyzing, but I do think that's BS. As most people have done. As most people have done. Any uh, sports radio personality would. But yeah, I'm going to say BS. Sorry, yeah. Mark. That is BS, right. and I think Dave uh, agrees with me on that front. So let's go on to the next one we have here. Jim Ursay had some <laughs> thoughts about Peyton Manning on his return, his first return to Lucas Oil Stadium as a member Welcome of the Denver home, Broncos in Indianapolis. Here's a quote from Jim Ursay prior to this game. You make the playoffs 11 times, and you're out in the first round seven of those 11 times. You love to have Star Wars numbers from Peyton, whatever that means, and Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne. Mostly, you love this ring. So basically... He's not, I want to say, taking a total shot at Peyton Manning, but that whole thing about you make the playoffs, uh, or rather you make the playoffs 11 times and you're out in the first round 7 of those 11, that is a shot. That is a blatant shot at Peyton Manning. And to me, that's BS. Come on, you don't have that's to. That's a pure call out. You don't need to do that, oh, this guy. He, he called him right out for <laughs> for everything that he did in Indianapolis, which is astonishing to me because of how much Peyton Manning did in Indianapolis. Like, what are you trying to, what are you talking about? What are you even mentioning these, the, the, the first round exits for? He won, he won you a Super Bowl, didn't he? Yeah, he won you a Super Bowl. He got there twice. I mean, I, look at the number of fans that he brought in. Thank you. I was just about Huge. to say, he made that franchise. He made the Colts. You, know, you, know what Jim Mercy, Colts. you know what Jim Mercy should do? He should walk out to the 50-yard line at Lucas Oil Stadium and just look around and realize to himself, no Peyton Manning, no Lucas Oil Stadium. And then wait for people to boo him. <laughs> because a ton of people would have and something to say to him. You know what's really BS to me about this is that, you know, now he's got Andrew Luck. And his team is on the upswing. Right. He didn't say this when the Colts were in the in the basement, you know, no. yeah. a, a year ago. No. He didn't say anything about this. Uh, he waited until the Colts were on the upswing, and he could confidently go out and say, "We don't miss Peyton Manning." We, you know, he oh, seven seven times, one and done. Maybe Andrew Luck What's really. Up with that? <laughs> maybe Andrew Luck really like fills his need. I don't know. And and you look at most I, quarterbacks that are great today, guys. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, one ring. You know, Ben Roethlisberger has two, whatever. Drew Brees won. So it's like, what do you expect? It's hard to get to a Super Bowl. And most times with the Colts, the road to the Super Bowl went through Foxborough. So, I mean, what do you have to complain about? You were supplied with so many memories from Peyton Manning. Total BS to make that comment. Peyton Manning made every player around him better. and that's Absolutely that, true. And that, that's the major point. Ursay does not have... Any backup to, you know, back up that point. You know, it's it's irrelevant when it comes to Peyton Manning not being one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. 
And, uh, you know, before we move on to the next thing, uh, I just want to say that the true BS in that quote was the fact that he used the, the phrase Star Wars numbers. I think he meant to say video game numbers. Yeah, video game numbers. <laughs> I, was, I was a little confused as to what that meant. Like, I love Star Wars. Yeah, I, I mean, like, if I was a character, I'd be Han Solo, but I just didn't understand it. I didn't get the, the what quote. What are the numbers from Star Wars? Yeah, it's like I've... how many, how many like, uh, stormtroopers <laughs> did Han and Luke kill? I, I don't yeah, get it. Like, Star Wars. How many lightsabers <laughs> did Luke was, Skywalker use? Maybe he was just thinking as big as space and he came up yeah with i just i when i read that i was like star wars numbers am i missing something like what yeah, is he talking I, I about like the millennium used, falcon or something i probably would use like super mario uh, <laughs> coins <laughs> yeah. you'll love having the high score in super mario but oh, seriously man all right so the next thing here on that's bs Vontae Davis sticking with the uh, Denver Broncos and the in- Indianapolis Colts. Cornerback Vontae Davis of the Indianapolis Colts spoke with Michelle Tafoya after the game, and this is what he had to say. Good week of practice. We prepared really hard for Tom Brady. So I, I think it just carried over from practice into the game. I- I'm sorry. Wait, uh, Dave, did he say Did he say Tom Brady? Uh, he <laughs> said TB. He said TB12. Who is, who wait, is wait. Vontae Davis playing? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was playing the Denver Broncos. Oh, he was. <laughs> he must be, like, reminiscing with his mind. Miami Dolphin days because um, <laughs> I mean that that is a really questionable that call on his part. Embarrassing. Pray really hard for Tom Brady. Tom Brady, are you kidding me? You just played Peyton Manning. What is wrong with you? Just get off the field and start running to the <laughs> locker room after that. People tend to mention Tom Brady and Peyton Manning in the same sentence, but when you are a professional athlete and you're going up against a team whose quarterback is Peyton Manning and not Tom Brady. Was it Michelle Probably Tafoya that asked that him the question? Yeah, Michelle Tafoya kind of oh. gave this blank stare after, like... Maybe he was oh. distracted then. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. That's but what I, I was thinking, because that's why I brought up her name. She's just a very attractive woman. Yeah, yeah, she is. So I think that's unanimous. That's BS. For sure. <laughs> Come on, man. Get his name right. All right, last one here on That's Vontae BS. Davis. This one's going to make you guys laugh. The AFC West is currently owned right now. The best record are the Kansas City Chiefs, who are 7-0, and the best team in the NFL record-wise. What? And, I don't believe you. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I know. I had to double-check and rub my eyes to make sure that they were really the only unbeaten left in the NFL. And can you just imagine if they finish the season ahead of the Denver Broncos and the Broncos have to go in as a wild card team? I it's would, not going to happen, oh, but... I would love it, though. Oh, it's my just, God. Let's just all reminisce in this moment right now because we all know the Broncos are going to take that division. We all know the Broncos are going to finish with the best record in the NFL. They're hey, probably going to go 15 Hey, hindsight 2020. Hines, uh, okay, fine. Uh, well, let's use this next week if yeah, they we, lose this weekend. We will see. But, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, let's just enjoy this while we can, that the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid with Alex Smith, and everyone, they are, and they've got talent. I mean, Jamal Charles, you know. They're a lucky team, Ashish. <laughs> Just say it. They're a lucky team. They're 26th in the NFL in passing yards, 12th in rushing yards. Jamal Charles should be having a ball, and he's just like, he's having a struggle this year. Opponent rushing yards, 109 rushing yards per game. And uh, they're good at the passing game, don't get me wrong, because they're good at rushing the quarterback. But everything else, they're... They're horrendous at. So you're calling BS. You don't think this is a legit 7-0? No way. No way. I'm calling BS, too. They get just so the lucky. That they're in front of the Broncos is BS right now. I mean, the Broncos are clearly the better team in that division, right? Even though the records don't of say course. so. Texans should have yeah. beat them this weekend. You know what? I'm so going to say not on. BS. Look, you got, I, I don't care about you know a hard schedule, a soft schedule. If you're 7-0 and and you've made it this far and have not yet lost a game... You're at least somewhat legit, okay? Are they going to finish with a better record than the Denver Broncos? Absolutely not. Are they going to finish undefeated and the best team in the NFL this year? No way. It's a fair point, though. That yeah, you but, but I yeah, mean, yeah, I mean, no. Yeah, not BS. You're 7-0. I mean, you play the games that are on your schedule. You take them and, seriously, and, you know? And you're 7-0. But moving forward, you, no, you just don't have faith in this team if you're the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, you guys are just so what? We got two BSs and one BS, not BS. BS as BS gets. I think it's BS that uh, that the they have a worse record than the Broncos. I I think that in that sense it doesn't indicate the better team. That's all. Oh well. There you have it. So we all unanimously unanimously agreed on one. Totally. Which doesn't surprise me at all. We're up against another break, but when we come back, we will have Luke Hughes of Nesson.com with us. You won't want to miss it. It's 1460 WXBR. 